Ladies and gentlemen, rock and rollers. All about ha ha ha. Welcome to the number 14th edition of the Electro Jet Rock Show. I'm your humble host, Jet Electro, coming to you from Las Vegas, Nevada, and I also have with me, coming to you from Los Angeles, my esteemed co-host, Professor Electro. What's up, everybody? Hope you're ready to rock. All right, we're going to rock and roll tonight. Yeah, so today what we're going to talk about, oh, but don't forget to like and subscribe. It'll really help us out and share this content with your friends that are a bunch of rock and rollers, mate. So what we're going to talk about today is Richie Blackmore's Rainbow, the first four albums. Yeah, the first four albums with Bronnie James Dio. So we're very excited to talk about that. Uh, big Ronnie James Dio fan myself, and I know the professor is. Now, if you were at the Rainbow Bar and Grill in Hollywood on the Sunset Strip and Ronnie James Dio asked you to pass the salt for his french fries, I don't know if he ate them, he wouldn't say, could you please pass the salt? He would say, please pass the magical cylinder with the magical crystals, but don't let it fall off to the table in the depths of darkness. Oh, yeah. Fire. Come down with fire. So, anywho, yeah, the first Richie Blackmore album is great. John Bonham's favorite song back in the day was uh, Man on the Silver Mountain, so it's got that one on it, which is a complete masterpiece. Love that one. Got the great riff, the cool lyrics, Ronnie singing. And then also on that one has the old Yardbirds cover, Still I'm Sad, which I think was an instrumental, and then Ronnie added some lyrics to you. What do you, you want to add something to that, Professor? Oh, yeah, and then they do an incredible version on the live album. I think it's from the Munich gig, uh, but it's just phenomenal. And then 16th Century Green Sleeves also. Is, oh, yeah, that one. And then Catch the Rainbow also, which, again, on the live album is just phenomenal. I mean, it's... It's so beautiful. It's so freaking incredible. But, you know, it, obviously its origins are in the first album. Right. So, yeah, I really like that album. Uh, that had the Elf Band, Ronnie's Band, because they were opening for Richie, or for uh, Deep Purple. And Richie uh, was listening to Ronnie and said, hey, these guys are really good. I'm not getting paid enough in Deep Purple. Don't like where the direction of the band's going. So... He uh, kind of like swallowed up the Elf band. That was Ronnie's band. It was called Elf. And they were on the first album. And I guess Richie got kind of tired of those guys. Or So then he went on to the second one, which is called Rainbow Rising, which is a phenomenal album. I always loved that one. And he got Cozy Powell in the band. They rebuilt the band after that. Yes, yeah. In fact, what I heard actually was that in the studio they were okay, but live he didn't really care for, you know, the way they played or, or presented themselves live. And I think the drummer, Gary Driscoll, I think was his name. Also, he had trouble keeping up, keeping tempo. And Richie said he always has a problem with drummers who couldn't keep proper tempo. And the guy was trying, he was really trying in the studio. His, I guess his, his headphones kept falling off his head. And they had to keep stopping, so Richie apparently even duct taped the headphones to his head to keep them from coming off. And even then, he was just getting nervous and not playing up to par. So that was some of the reasons why Richie changed the personnel. But yeah, he changed him with Cozy Powell, one of your favorites and one of mine. Oh, so, yeah, phenomenal. That was just one of the greatest bands of all time. And, you know, it's kind of sad, Richie, you know... Uh, even David Stone mentioned he had such a great band that he just, you know, he self-destructed the band, you know, and, and letting Dio go. But, uh, you know. Yeah, they didn't, he, they didn't get the sales that they wanted or deserved, and the record company was bugging him to go in more of a commercial direction. They wanted the hits. But, uh, yeah, Rainbow Rising, Terrell Woman's on that one. I really love that, and especially with the, uh, the Moog synthesizers at the beginning. Oh, and uh, yeah, there's a, a few epic tracks on there, like "Light in the Black" and "Stargazer." Which ones do you like on that one? Yeah, absolutely. "Stargazer" and "Terror Woman" are just masterpieces. And uh, Tony Carey, man, I mean, again, I don't know why you let him go. 
you know, uh, they tortured that guy apparently, you know, and that's why why he left. <clears throat> he was worried for his safety, and they were playing. He and Cozy, R- Richie and Cozy, were playing all kinds of horrible practical jokes on him, putting like a big heavy piece of wood on top of the door so when he opened it, it would fall on his head. You know, and and Tony, I think was uh, Tony Carey at that time was pretty young compared to the rest of these guys, and you know they were really carrying on. Yeah, he's uh, getting the hazing. Yeah, heavy hazing. So, and but you know, every, everybody kind of tries to uh, pigeonhole Ronnie James Dio into this, you know, witches and sorcery and and, uh, and all that sort of thing. But castle gonna, and dragon. Castle and Dragon and Cobblestone Road. Oh, yeah. Exactly. But if you listen to, you know, A Light in the Black or Starstruck, I don't think those are anything like that. No, you know, they're not. Two songs. Obviously, Terra Woman and Stargazer. But, you know, my understanding was Richie wanted Stargazer to kind of be, um, you know, like a, like a Led Zeppelin, you know, masterpiece. Yeah, that was the concept of Richie's when he formed Rainbow. He wanted to take the best elements of Deep Purple and Led Zeppelin, and and that that's what he wanted the direction of Rainbow to be. I also like Run with the Wolf on that one too. That's a great, really good one. Yeah, I mean that whole album, Cut for Cut, is great. Yeah, I think Stargazer was supposed to be, um, you know, their version of um, uh, what's this the Zeppelin song I'm thinking of? Uh, like Cashmere. Uh, Cashmere, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's pretty different, but I, yeah, but it's just sort of like the seed of it, the inspiration of it. So, what was yeah, the mystical thir- kind of foreign sounding, kind of eastern sounding? So, what was the third Rainbow album? Was that the on stage live album, or did that they- was the live album? That's uh, you know, which we'll get to another episode. One of my favorite albums. I think it's one of the greatest albums of all time. Not just one of the greatest uh, live albums, but one of the greatest albums. Oh of all time. yeah, it's great. It's incredible. The emotion, the the, uh, the ability, the technical ability is, and Ronnie's vocals are just over the top. Fabulous. Absolutely. Just yeah, great. kill the kill the king on that man. It opens up with a different riff, then it's on then it's on the uh, long live rock and roll. Uh, so then the next one, then uh, the last one was uh, long live rock and roll, which I think is an absolute masterpiece. The sound on it is phenomenal. It's a really punchy record. I think Richie's playing the bass on that. Got rid of Tony Carey, who went on to be in Planet P, and they he kind of had a, maybe a little bit of a last laugh because they had a big hit on MTV when MTV first came out. Um, and, uh, yeah, Ronnie's deal, Ronnie Dio's vocals are incredible on that, and you can see him on the, uh, on the uh, promo films that they made for Gates of Babylon. The Long Live Rock and Roll, and one of my favorite songs on that album, L.A. Connection. But that album's phenomenal. I, I really like it a lot. Love it, actually. What do you think about it, Professor? Absolutely. I mean, they're all great. I mean, that's a Martin Birch album, so of course it's got that punch. But, you know, again, L.A. Connection, Sensitive Delight, those two songs are not sword and sorcery and castles and, you know, and that sort of thing. Yeah, they went off more into the rock and roll thing because it's called Long Live Rock and Roll. I, I do. Uh, the only one that's a little like the, uh, this, ba- the old kind of thing, is uh, "Lady of the Lake," which is a phenomenal track. I love the uh, the gu- the guitar riff on that. A little Zeppelin-y on that. Yeah, it's great. And "Rainbow Eyes," another one. I mean, it's a ballad, but you know, everybody talks about, oh, you know, in the '80s you had to have a ballad. Well, listen, they, you know, Rainbow was doing that, but they were doing it like you know, over the top, fabulous. I mean, that's just a, an incredible song. But uh, the whole album, obviously, is great. And, you know, um, my understanding was that Dio was let go because he, he didn't want to sing I Surrender. Oh, uh, yeah, that could, be, that could be. That uh, could be. No, Cozy quit the band because of that, too. He didn't like that at all. Right. Uh, but that was after Ronnie didn't want to do that, and they did want to go in another direction. So is there any other comments you want to add before we close this thing out? Oh, there's a ton more I could talk about those four albums, but for now, I think we summed it up pretty good. What do you think? I think we summed it up pretty good, mate. Uh, yeah, I love Long Live Rock and Roll. It's a friggin' masterpiece, probably one of the greatest rock and roll albums of all time. I just love the sound on it, love the songs on it, love the punch on it. Yeah, it's a friggin' masterpiece. Um yeah, kids, if you want to get, like, just sort of an o- overview of those, probably get the live album, I would say. It's called Rainbow on Stage. 
Yeah, phenomenal album. And, and again, don't forget to like and subscribe, especially subscribe to our channel. If you happen to be passing through, we're going to have a lot more good stuff coming. The sun became the night. The night became the day. <laughs> The day became the castle in the sky. Oh, stop with that. Stop. Yeah, we used to have a parody band. They wrote a song called, and the, the, core, the refrain was, Look out, Richie Blackmore's coming after me. Like, but like with Dio singing it. So, yeah, uh, Ronnie, he's so, his niche thing, he's, he's kind of fun to parody. But anyway, this is Jet Electro reminding you to like and subscribe, kids. And share this among your rock and roll friends. And uh, it's about time to sign out. So this is the Electrojet Rock Show. Signing out. Rock and roll! Rock and roll!